Assalamu alaikum friends, welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to talk about ankylostoma and nicator. You might be wondering why to study them together. Let me tell you, because both have many similarities, so it's better to group them together and study them together. This is a continuation of the parasitology series, partially the nematode series, and this is the fourth video in that series. Before starting the lecture, I'd like to tell that these videos are meant for educational purposes. Things and treatments may change with time. If I get wrong or miss anything, your input is always welcomed in the comment section. Grab a pen and a notepad and let's get started. Ankylostoma and Nicator Full names For Ankylostoma, it is Ankylostoma duodenale, and for Nicator, it is Nicator americanus. Both are also called as hookworms because their heads are bent in a way that forms a hook-like structure. For Ankylostoma, it is called as Old World Hookworm and the Nicator americanus, it is called as New World Hookworm. They are responsible for causing hookworm infection. For Ankylostoma, it is Ankylostomiasis and for Nicator, it is Nicatoriasis. As in this picture, you can see this cutaneous larva migrants. This is caused by the ankylostoma or nicator larva. We'll discuss that in clinical findings or pathogens section. Lecture outline. I have introduced you guys to the ankylostoma duodenale and the nicator americanus. Now we'll talk about their morphology, habitat and transmission, life cycle, pathogenesis and epidemiology, clinical findings, lab diagnosis, treatment, and then finally the prevention. Before talking about the morphology, you should know what are the three developmental stages that exist in the life cycle of every nematode. As the ankylostoma and nicator are nematodes, so they do have these three stages. First one is egg, second one is larva, and the third one is adult. Let's talk about the egg first. It is oval or elliptical in shape. It is 65 micrometers by 40 micrometers in size. It is colorless, it has covering. It has a transparent covering, the hyaline shell membrane. As you can see in this picture, this one. It contains segmented ovum, usually with four blastomeres when it is passed in feces. Let's see. This is the egg as we have visualized that before. It has got this segmented ovum. It has these four blastomeres, this transparent membrane. It is infective when it is in its embryonated stage and it becomes diagnostic when it is in it's an embryonated stage. Uh, when eggs are passed in feces, they are unembryonated. That's why when we get a sample of feces, we visualize it under microscope, we see the unembryonated eggs. Lava. When the egg is released in the feces, it gets embryonated in the warm, moist soil. And lava has two forms. First one is rhabditiform and the second one is filariform larvae. When filariform larvae from the moist soil penetrate the skin, usually the feet or the legs. And then it is responsible for causing infection. How it does that? We'll study that in life cycle. Here you can visualize the lava, this one, inside the egg. Adult worm shape. It is small, unsegmented and cylindrical. Size. Male is 8 millimeters while the female is 12.5 millimeters as female is slightly larger than the male. Color. It is grayish white in color but it appears reddish brown when it is obtained freshly from a sample. Like in fresh specimen it will be reddish brown cause of ingestion of the blood. Structure. As I've told you that female is slightly larger than the male. Anterior end. It is bent slightly dorsally, that giving it a hook shape. That is why these are termed as hookworms, the ankylostoma and the negator. They have got a buccal capsule, six teeth, four hook-like structures on ventral surface and two knob-like structures on dorsal surface. For ankylostoma, it has teeth on its head. But for negator, it has got the cutting plates on its head. The oral aperture is subterminal on the dorsal surface. Posterior end. Male. It is expanded in umbrella-like fashion. It has got the copulary bursa having the three lobes and three chytus rays that support the lobes. The female is tapering at the posterior end with no expanded bursa. Genital opening. Male. Opens posteriorly with cloaca. Female. Its genital opening is situated at the junction of posterior and the middle third of the body. As you can see in this picture, these are the female adult hookworms. On the left side is the ankylostoma and on the right side is the nicator. Habitate. 
hosts the definitive hosts are human beings for the worms you know what guys eggs need to live in the warm moist soil for some time so it will definitely live to become embryonated and these worms have no intermediate host transmission Transmission occurs by a fecal dermal route when the filariform larvae penetrates through the skin, usually the feet or the legs. Life cycle. It has two stages. First one is human cycle. Second one is the external environment cycle. Human cycle is further divided into lung stage and the intestinal stage. Let's start with the human cycle first. As humans are infected when filariform larvae in moist soil penetrate the skin usually of feet or legs they are carried by blood to the lungs here the lung stage starts then they migrate into the alveoli and up the bronchi trachea and then they are cuffed up and are swallowed where they will go after swallowing definitely gi tract here the intestinal cycle starts then these develop into adults in the small intestine attaching to the wall with either cutting plates in the case of nicator or the teeth in, in the case of ankylostoma. And then they feed on the blood from capillaries of the intestinal villi and thousands of eggs are passed per day in feces. After that external environment cycle starts where the eggs first develop into non-infectious feeding rhabditiform larvae and then into third stage infectious non-feeding filariform larvae. When this filariform larvae penetrate the skin, the cycle is completed. Diagrammatic representation of life cycle of ankylostoma and nicator. It starts here when the eggs are released in feces and then they are deposited in warm moist soil where they are converted into rhabditiform larvae and then into the filariform larvae. When this filariform larvae penetrate the human skin, it will go through the circulation into the lungs and then they are cuffed up and are swallowed then they will enter the gi for ankylostoma species larvae can become developmentally arrested and dormant in tissues reactivated larvae may enter the small intestine there's another species of ankylostoma that is silanicum ankylostoma silanicum so uh, ankylostoma has teeth on their head while the nicator has cutting plates on their head so it, uh, so with these things they will suck the blood from the intestine and will lead to iron deficiency anemia and will release eggs these eggs will be passed in feces and then again deposited in soil and the larva will again hatch out will enter the human body usually the uh, leg or feet skin and this will complete the cycle pathogenesis the major damage is due to the loss of blood at the site of attachment in the small intestine. Up to 0.1 to 0.3 milliliters of blood is lost per worm per day. Blood is consumed by the worm and oozes from the site in response to an anticoagulant made by the worm. Due to the loss of blood, iron deficiency anemia can occur. Weakness and paler accompany the microcytic anemia caused by the blood loss. These symptoms occur in patients whose nutrition cannot compensate for the blood loss. Epidemiology. Hookworm is found worldwide, especially in tropical areas. In United States, Nicator is endemic in rural southern states. What are its predisposing factors? Walking barefoot on soil predisposes to an infection. An important public health measure was requiring children to wear shoes to the school. Clinical findings. The hookworm infection is mostly asymptomatic, but symptoms can occur and symptoms occur based on the uh, location of the worm, where the worm is present, either in lungs or the intestine. Weakness and paler accompany the microcytic anemia caused by the blood loss. Crowned itch can occur, which is a pruritic papule or vesicle that can occur at the site of injury of the larvae into the skin. Cutaneous larva migrants can occur. The human hookworms are responsible for that. What is it? When worm gets entrapped in the superficial layers of the skin, especially the foot, that can cause threat like lesions, irritation, or pruritus. Pneumonia will also occur uh, with eosinophilia because larval migration occurs through the lungs. Lab diagnosis. We'll need sample of feces. Diagnosis is made by microscopically by observing the eggs in the stool. 
we'll look for the number and shape of the eggs. Occult blood in these stools is frequent. Eosinophilia is typical. Treatment. The drugs of choice are albendazole, mebendazole, and parental pain weight. Prevention. Disposing of sewage properly and wearing shoes are effective means of prevention. Alright guys, let's review everything quickly. The organisms are Ankylostoma duodenale and Nicator americanus. Their common names are Old World Hookworm for Ankylostoma and New World Hookworm for Nicator. They are responsible for causing hookworm infection. Ankylostoma can cause ankylostomiasis and Nicator can cause Nicatoriasis. Their mode of transmission occurs via penetration of larvae in the skin. The definitive host for them is the human beings. Uh, the endemic areas are worldwide, especially tropics for ankylostoma and U.S. for nicator. Primary location are intestine and lungs, mainly the intestine, but lungs can also be the location for infection. Diagnosis. It is based on finding the eggs in stool. Treatment. The drugs of choice are albendazole, mebendazole, and parental pain weight. As their primary location of infection is intestine, so they are categorized as intestinal nematode. They have no insect vector. The stage that infects the humans is the filari from larvae that enters the human skin, usually the feet or the leg stages. In the humans, most associated with the disease are the adult worms in the small intestine that cause the blood loss leading to anemia. Important stages outside the human that are eggs that when hatches releases the rhabditiform larvae, that is the second stage, and the, the third stage, that is filariform larvae, the rhabditiform larvae converts in that. And that's it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. You've learned something. Don't forget to connect with me on all of my socials. I've got my Instagram where I upload amazing infographics for you guys. For example, take this one where I have uploaded amazing resources for pathology, which textbooks you can use, uh, which online resources like YouTube channels, websites, apps, uh, flashcards, you can use and some techniques as well. I've got my Twitter and I rarely upload vlogs, so do check them out. Till next time, Assalamu Alaikum.